Hello and welcome. This week we're starting a new chapter. For the next three weeks we're going to be using a technique called the Laplace Transform. Today we'll start by seeing what is the Laplace Transform and why do we want the Laplace Transform in a differential equations course. And then after the midterm exam in the next two lessons, we look at some more advanced techniques for using the Laplace transform. What is the Laplace transform? Before we can answer that, I need to do a little bit of revision from calculus. Remember that if we write an integral with an infinite limit, what we really mean is we're going to calculate the integral with a finite limit and then we're going to take the limit as r tends to infinity. So for example, assuming that c is a non-zero constant, we can calculate the integral from zero to infinity of e to the power of ct dt. And what this really means is the limit as r tends to infinity of the integral from zero to r, or this integral. we need to calculate the limit as r tends to infinity of 1 over c, e to the power cr minus 1. And this limit will change depending on if c is a positive number or a negative number. If c is a positive number, e to the power cr tends to infinity, so we have an infinite limit. If c is a negative number, then e to the power cr tends to 0. We get 0 minus 1 or minus 1 the limit is equal to minus 1 over c. Another example. Find that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over t dt. What this really means is the limit is capital R times infinity of the integral from 1 to capital R, 1 over t dt. And we know how to do this. We can find that this limit or this integral is equal to infinity. All of this should be revision for you from first year calculus. A function is piecewise continuous. It looks like the picture at the top. If we could chop this up, into smaller functions and each one of these small functions is continuous. Or to say again, circled in orange, I have a continuous function. Circled in red as another continuous function and then another continuous function and then a fourth continuous function. We add these four functions together, we have a function which we call piecewise continuous. Each piece is a continuous function. But let's be more precise. Function is piecewise continuous if there exists a partition, a finite partition, such that on each one of these subintervals, the function is continuous, and at the end of each one of these um, subintervals, the one-sided limit exists and they are finite. I don't want any functions where as we, as we come to a discontinuity it goes up to infinity. I don't want this. We need to have a finite limit, a uh, finite one-sided limit at the end of each piece. Now we can start talking about the Laplace transform. We know what the derivative does. The derivative takes a function, small f of t, and it changes this into a new function. When we differentiate the function, we get a new function, and the new function we typically call f prime. But the plus transform also takes a function, and it gives us a new function. If we start with the function small f of t, 
when we apply the Laplace transform, we get a new function, which typically we call capital F, and we change the variable from T to S. Just a few conditions to be careful. Suppose capital K is a positive number, capital M is a capital number, A is a number. Suppose that F is piecewise continuous on the closed interval from zero to capital A for any positive A. And suppose that F doesn't get too big. Just a technical condition, let's suppose that F is always smaller than K e to the power A T. Then the Laplace transform is a new function which is defined using this formula. We take the function f of t <coughs> that we start with, we multiply it by e to the minus st, and then we integrate it between 0 and infinity. And there's two ways to write the Laplace transform of small f. We could either write capital F of s. Or we could use this curly L of F at S. When we use a pen, we usually write this curly L like this. And the definition tells us that capital F of S exists for all S strictly greater than A. Let's do some examples. Easiest function I can think of is the function 1. First we're going to calculate the, the Laplace transform of 1. I've written the formula at the top. We're going to replace f of t by 1. We're going to, and then we're going to calculate this integral. So we're going to be doing the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the power minus st dt. That's the same as the limit as capital R tends to infinity of minus e to the minus st of s evaluated at 0 of r. I've skipped a step here. And this is equal to 1 over s. And this is defined as long as s is strictly greater than 0. Let's do another one. The Laplace transform of e to the power 80. Take e to the power 80 and we put it into our formula instead of f of t. We need to integrate from 0 to infinity the function e to the power minus st e to the power 80 dt. Now, integral from 0 to infinity really means limit as r tends to infinity, the integral from 0 to r. But I'm going to start admitting that notation. I'm going to start assuming that you always know that when I write an integral from 0 to infinity, really I mean the limit as r tends to infinity of the integral from 0 to r. And for this, this function, when we calculate this, we get 1 over s minus a. And I'll leave it for you to think about this is defined as long as s is strictly greater than a. Now that means that we've started with a function e to the power a t with domain t between 0 and infinity. And we've changed this into a new function, 1 divided by s minus a, which is now defined between a and infinity. In other words, it's defined for s between a and infinity. We can calculate the Laplace transform of a piecewise continuous function such as this. As a mistake in the picture, there should 
dot should be here, but it doesn't matter when we do an integral. Function f is equal to 1 if t is between 0 and 1. Function f is equal to k, and I've just chosen to draw k here. If t is equal to 1, and the function is equal to 0 if t is greater than 1. Calculate the Laplace transform of this function. I want to calculate capital F of S or the Laplace transform small f of S. And I have my formula at the top. Now, the function is equal to 1 between 0 and 1, and then the function is equal to 0. So between 0 and 1, we have 1. Between 1 and infinity, we're going to integrate with 0, which is 0. So really, we're just integrating the function e to the power minus st between 0 and 1. And we know how to do this. The answer is 1 minus e to the power minus s divided by s, as long as s is strictly greater than 1. Find the Laplace transform of sine 80. This time we're going to need to use integration by parts. We start with our formula, the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the power of minus st sine 80 dt. Or what this really means is, this really means the limit as r tends to infinity of the integral from 0 to r e to the power of minus st sine 80 dt. I have an integral of two functions multiplied together, so I'm going to use integration by parts. e to the power of minus st will be u, sine 80 will be v prime. By the formula, we have u multiplied by v, that's e to the power of minus st multiplied by an empty derivative of sine 80, minus the integral of u prime, or the derivative of e to the power of minus st, multiplied by sine 80. An antiderivative of sine 80 is minus 1 over a cos 80. And Again here, cos 80 over a. The derivative of e to the power minus st is minus s, e to the minus st. We have two minus signs which cancel out. Simplify this a little bit. We have 1 over a minus s over a, integral from 0 to infinity, e to the power minus st cos 80. Now we still have an integral of two functions multiplied together. So we use integration by parts again. And this time I'm going to leave it for you to check that if we integrate this formula at the top, what we get is 1 over a minus s squared over a squared, integral from 0 to infinity, e to the power minus, e to the power minus st, sine a. Please pause the video if you're re-watching this and check this. So now I want to point out that what we have, just here, is exactly the, the integral that we started with. This is exactly capital G of S. So we found that G of S is equal to 1 over A minus S squared over A squared, capital G of S which we can solve to find that capital G of S is A divided by S squared plus A squared. This is the Laplace transform of sine 80.
Next example, we could also, using the same method, use an integration by parts twice, show that the Laplace transform of cos AT is S divided by S squared plus A squared. I'm going to leave this for you to check. Let me just remind you on the previous page, the Laplace transform of sine AT was a divided by s squared plus a squared. We have almost exactly the same formula for the past transform cos at, but instead of a on the top, we have s on the top. We could calculate the Laplace transform of shine at. I'm going to leave this for you to check. It's almost the same calculation as for sine you will find that we get a minus sign just here. Because when we differentiate shine two times, we get shine. When we differentiate sine two times, we get minus sign. Likewise, I'm going to leave it for you to prove that the Laplace transform of cosh at is s over s squared minus a squared. And again, it's minus because if we differentiate cos two times, we get minus cos. But if we differentiate cosh two times, we get plus cosh. Other than that, the calculation is the same. Theorem. The Laplace transform is a linear operator. In other words, the Laplace transform of C F, C1 F1 plus C2 F2 is equal to C1 Laplace transform of F1 plus C2 Laplace transform of F2. And I leave this for you to prove. If you re watch the video, pause it here, write down a proof of this on paper. You can do this in a few lines. For example, let's suppose that small h of t is 5 e to the power of minus 2t or minus 3 sine 40. Calculate the Laplace transform of this function. Because the Laplace transform is a linear operator, we can break this up. Instead of the Laplace transform of this whole function, instead we have 5 multiplied by the Laplace transform e to the minus 2t minus 3 Laplace transform of sine 40. And we know how to do these. We've calculated the Laplace transform e to 80 and we've calculated the Laplace transform of sine 80. So straight away we can now write down 5 multiplied by 1 over s plus 2 minus 3 multiplied by 4 over s squared plus 16. And we can simplify this a little bit. We also have an inverse Laplace transform. And it's defined such that if capital F is the Laplace transform of small f, then small f is the inverse Laplace transform of capital F. For example, the Laplace transform of 1 is equal to 1 over s. The inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s is equal to 1. The inverse Laplace transform is also a linear operator. The inverse Laplace transform of C1 F1 plus C2 F2, as you would expect, is C1 inverse Laplace transform of F1 plus C2 inverse Laplace transform of F2. For example, find the inverse Laplace transform of 10 over S squared minus 25. 
Now, this looks similar to one of the ones we've had before. In the previous example, I said uh, the Laplace transform shine AT is A divided by S squared minus A squared. And this looks similar. S squared, S squared, A squared, 5 squared, okay. But on the top, we don't have 5, instead we have 10. So we need to do a, a little simplification first. First, I'm going to take the two outside the bracket so that I do have a 5 on the top. Now, 5 over s squared minus 25 looks the same as a over s squared minus b squared. So this must be 2 multiplied by shine 5t. And this is a technique we're going to be doing a lot. We're going to be taking a number outside of the inverse of Laplace transform so that we're left with something recognizable, something that we already know, and then we're going to write down the answer. Find the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 over s minus 2. Remember the Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s. The Laplace transform e to the power 80 is 1 over s minus a. And this is this is this looks like what we have. We have 1 over s and we have 1 over s minus a number. So what we want is the inverse Laplace transform 1 over s plus the inverse Laplace transform 1 over s minus 2, which is 1 plus e to the power 2t. A theorem which we're going to be using, the Laplace transform of t to the power n, f of t, is minus 1 to the power n multiplied by the nth derivative of capital F. This is a formula which we're going to use a lot. This is a formula which I am going to prove. And first I'm going to prove it if n is equal to 1 n is equal to 1, we get t to the power 1, minus 1 to the power 1, and then 1 derivative of capital F. I'm going to start with the right hand side, I'm going to start with minus df ds. That's minus the derivative of our Laplace transform formula. And time being, let's just suppose that we're allowed to take the derivative inside the integral sign. We have d ds of e to the power minus s t f of t. f of t does not contain s, so we don't need to worry about that. All we're going to be doing is we're differentiating e to the power minus s t. And the derivative of e to the power minus s t is minus t e to the power minus s t. This minus t we can take outside of the integral. Oh, sorry, I'm going to take this minus sign we can take outside of the integral. And we're left with the integral of e to the power minus s to t f of t, which is the same as the Laplace transform t f of t. That means this formula is true for n equal to 1. But if it's true for n equal to 1, we can use this formula again and again and again. We can use it twice to show that it's true for n equal to 2, and then n equal to 3, n equal to 4, etc. By using the formula again and again and again, we can show that it's true for n equal to Now I want to use this formula because I want to calculate the Laplace transform of t squared cosh 2t. We know the Laplace transform of cosh 80 and we know the Laplace transform of t to the power n multiplied by a function. 
we have minus one squared, two derivatives of the left hand transfer cosh 2t. Minus one squared, of course, is just one. So we have two derivatives of s over s squared minus two squared. And I'm going to leave it for you to check. Uh, if we differentiate it this function two times, we get this form which I've written. We can also use this formula to calculate the Laplace transfer of t to the power n. Because t to the power n is the same function as t to the power n multiplied by 1. And we know the Laplace transfer of 1. So all we need to do is to calculate minus 1 to the power n nth derivative of the B Laplace transform of 1. That's minus 1 to the power n, nth derivative of 1 over s. And I'll leave it for you to check that this is the same as minus 1 to the power n, minus 1 to the power n, n factorial divided by s to the power n minus 1. Of course, uh, minus 1 to the power n multiplied by minus 1 to the power n cancels out. And we're just left with n factorial divided by s to the power n plus 1. Let's go through a table of elementary class transforms. You can find the table in the course material section. I hope you've printed this out or you have this open in the following along. Most of these we've done already. The Laplace transfer of 1 we've done, the Laplace transfer of e to the power 80. We've just done the Laplace transfer of t to the power m. Sine 80, cos 80, shine 80, cosh 80 we've done. We scroll down. We haven't yet done e to the power 80 sine bt, e to the power 80 cos bt. t to the power n, e to the 80. We've seen how to do this. U subscript c is the unit step function. We will study this in the next lesson. Um, next lesson, next lesson, next lesson, not next lesson, but the lesson after, we'll do this one, and this one at the bottom we've just done. For example, find the inverse of mass transform of Capital F of S is equal to ln 1 plus 1 over S squared. Now, this doesn't look like one of the ones we've seen so far, but we know that if we differentiate the natural logarithm, we get uh, 1 divided by S. So we're going to end up with something that we have seen. Again, we're going to use the formula. Well, the fast transfer of t to the power n, f of t is equal to minus 1 to the power n, n through of capital F. We're going to set n equal to 1, because we're only going to differentiate in one time. And then we're going to take the inverse of fast transfer of both sides to get that t f of t is equal to minus the inverse of fast transfer of df ds. We're going to take our function capital F. We're going to differentiate it. We're going to find the inverse of that transform. Then we're going to multiply by 1. And then finally, we're going to divide by t. And we will be left with f of t. 
So first of all, we differentiate the capital F. And I'll leave the to check. Using the chain rule, this is the same as minus 2 divided by S cubed over 1 plus 1 over S squared. Or to simplify this slightly, that's the same as minus 2 divided by S, S squared plus 1. Therefore, using that formula, t multiplied by f of t is minus the inverse, if I transpose this, df ds, the minus signs cancel. We want to calculate the inverse of class transfer 2 over s, s squared plus 1. We get to go any further in this calculation, we need to write 2 over s, s squared plus 1 in partial fractions. Hopefully this is revision for you, but if not, go back to your first year calculus notes and revise this. I have an s on the bottom and I have an s squared plus 1. So this is going to be equal to something divided by s plus something divided by s squared plus 1. Now s squared plus 1 is a second degree polynomial. So on the top something will be a first degree polynomial. The degree is always one less. S is a first degree polynomial, so on the top there should be a polynomial of 3, 0, which is just a constant. When we multiply these over together, we put them over the same denominator, a s squared plus 1 plus b s squared plus c s, or rearrange this, a plus b s squared plus c s plus a divided by s s squared plus 1. And this needs to be the same as we started with. We started with just 2. So a must be 2. We started with 0s on the top. So c must be 0. And we started with 0s squared. So a plus b must be 0. So a must be 2, b must be minus 2, and c must be 0. So our function must be equal to 2 divided by s minus 2s divided by s squared plus 1. Good. Now we can go back to finding our inverse and class transform. I want to calculate the inverse of that transform of 2 over s minus 2 over s, s squared plus 1. And I want this to look like the elementary Laplace transforms that we've already done. So what I do is I take my table of elementary Laplace transforms, if you have this on paper, take a look at it now. We're looking down the middle column to find the things which look like the function First of all, we have 2 over s. This looks like 1 over s. We also have 2s divided by s squared plus 1. We look down the middle column and we see it looks like this one. It looks like s divided by s squared plus a squared. I'm writing these at the bottom because we're going to be using this. Now that we know what we're trying to, which ones we want to use, we know which numbers to take outside of the inverse of class transforms. I want to have 1 over s, so I take the 2 out. I want to have s over s squared plus 1, so I take the minus 2 out. This is the same as 2 minus 2 constant. 
And then we're almost finished. Divide both sides by t, and we will have our answer. The answer to this problem is f of t is equal to 2 multiplied by 1 minus cos t divided by t. Well, that's very interesting, but why are we studying the Laplace transform in our maths course, which is about differential equations? Because of this formula, the Laplace transform of f prime is equal to s multiplied by the Laplace transform of f minus f of 0. What this means is the Laplace transform eats derivatives. We have a similar formula for two derivatives of f, for three derivatives of f, or n derivatives of f. We have two derivatives, we start with s squared, we have three derivatives, we start with s cubed, we have n derivatives, we're starting with s to the power n. And then the number the power of s decreases. s squared, then s to the power 1, then s to the power 0. We start with s cubed, it's s cubed, then s squared, then s, then s to the power 0, and so on. We always have Laplace transform f at the start. And then every other term is about our function f calculated at zero. These are such important formulae in differential equations that it's important that we prove them. We're going to prove the first one using integration by parts. Start with the formula for the Laplace transform of f prime and use integration by parts. I'll leave this for you to check later. e to the power minus st f of t, integral of the derivative of e to the power minus st f of t. When we differentiate this and simply calculate, um, when we evaluate e to the power minus st f of t at zero and infinity, we are left with minus f of zero plus s integral from zero to infinity e to the power minus st f of t. But this formula, this function I've written in red, we recognize because this is just for the class transform f. So the first formula is proved, and it's proved just using integration by parts. We can prove the second formula by using the first formula. Take the formula at the top, and every time we see an f, we're going to replace it by f prime. Instead of this f, we have f prime. Instead of this f, we've got f prime. Instead of derivative of f, we have the derivative of f prime, or f double prime. We know this is true because we proved it in part one. But here in green, look, we have the, the Laplace transform f prime. And we have a formula for this. It's the formula from part one. We're using this formula two times. And then simplify this. We have the formula that we're, we're hoping to, the, the formula that we're trying to prove. All we've done here is we've used the first formula two times. I'm going to leave parts three and parts four for you to prove.
Now that we have these formulae, we can solve initial value problems. Here's a simple initial value problem. We already know how to solve this from chapter three. But now I want to solve this using the middle class transform. Using the method from chapter three, this is revision for you. You could write down the characteristic equation and find that the roots are minus one and two. We write down general solution to the differential equation, and then we find the constant C1 and C2 to find that the solution of this problem is two thirds e to the power minus t plus one third e to the power of two t. Now let's solve this again using the Laplace transform. The idea is, let's suppose we start with a difficult differential equation and we want to solve this differential equation. Instead, what we can do is we can use the Laplace transform to change this into an easy equation for capital Y. We can solve the easy equation to find capital Y and then we could use the inverse Laplace transform to find small y. So we're starting with our differential equation, y double prime minus y prime minus 2y is equal to 0. And we're going to take the Laplace transform of this differential equation. We're going to put L on the left and L on the right. The Laplace transform 0 is just a 0. Think about this. The Laplace transform is an integral of e to the power of minus st function. If the function is zero, then we're just integrating zero. Or if we think about this another way, the Laplace transform is a linear operator. Now, a linear operator always maps zero to zero. Because the, the Laplace transform is linear, we can break the left hand side up like this. And then we're going to use our formula. In the previous theorem, we know that the Laplace transform of y double prime is minus s squared capital Y minus s of y zero minus y prime of zero. And we know that the Laplace transform of y prime is s capital Y minus y zero. We're going to put these in place of the Laplace transform of y double prime and the Laplace transform of y prime. And then we're going to gather together the terms involving capital Y. And we're going to put in the initial conditions. Remember, Y of zero is equal to one, Y prime of zero is equal to zero. Put these numbers in and rearrange. We are left with s squared minus s minus 2 capital Y plus 1 minus s equal to 0. Rearrange this to solve for capital Y. Capital Y is s minus 1 divided by s squared minus s minus 2, or factorizing the bottom s minus 1 divided by s minus 2, s plus 1. We need to use partial fractions. Using partial fractions, and I'm going to leave this for you to double check. This is the same as 1 third, 1 over s minus 2, plus 2 thirds, 1 over s plus 1. And these functions will look familiar to us. If we look on our table of elementary plus transforms, we can see this looks like the Laplace transform e to the power 80. In particular, the Laplace transform e to the 2t is 1 over s minus 2, and the Laplace transform e to the power minus t is 1 over s plus 1. So small y must be 
1 over 3 e to the power 2t plus 2 over 3 e to the power minus t, which of course is exactly the same solution that we found using the previous method. Another example, this time an initial value problem with a non homogeneous second order linear differential equation. We start with the differential equation and we take the Laplace transform. We use our formula, our formula for the Laplace transform for y double prime and we use our formula for the Laplace transform of sine 2t. We get s squared, capital Y minus s, y of 0, minus y prime of 0, plus capital Y is equal to 2 divided by s squared plus 4. Remember, y of 0 is equal to 2, and y prime of 0 is equal to 1. Put these numbers in, rearrange, and then divide both sides by s squared plus 1. Put everything over um, s squared plus 1. We end up with capital Y is 2s plus 1 divided by s squared plus 1 plus 2 divided by s squared plus 1, s squared plus 1. Or using partial fractions, this is the same as 2s plus 1 over s squared plus 1, plus 2 thirds, s squared plus 1, minus 2 thirds, s squared plus 4. Now, This plus one and plus two thirds, I'm putting together to make five over three. And then I'm going to take my numbers out. Two multiplied by s over s squared plus one. Take the five over three out. Five over three, one over s squared plus one. And there's something to notice here. I didn't take all of two thirds out, I've only taken one over three out. Why have I done this? Because two divided by s squared plus four appears on the table of elementary and class transforms, but one divided by s squared plus four does not. If you look down your table of elementary and class transforms, you see each of these functions in brackets appears on the table because s over s squared plus 1 is the Laplace transform of cos t, 1 over s squared plus 1 is the Laplace transform of sine t, and 2 over s squared plus 4 is the Laplace transform of sine 2t. As soon as we know capital Y, we can take the inverse of Laplace transform and we can write down small solution to this initial value problem is 2 cos t plus 5 over 3 sine t minus 1 over 3 sine 2t. Solve a fourth order homogeneous linear differential equation with four initial conditions. We're going to use the Laplace transform. The Laplace transform is equal to 0, and that must be equal to the Laplace transform of y, the four derivatives of y minus the Laplace transform of y. We have a formula for four derivatives of y, and then because most of the initial conditions are 0, this will simplify. This simplifies to s to the power of 4 minus 1, capital Y, minus s squared. And just to double check, the 
function we have in front of y should always be the same as the fourth function in the characteristic equation. If I wrote down the characteristic equation, I would have r to the power of 4 minus 1 is equal to 0. r to the power of 4 minus 1 should be the same type of function here, s to the power of 4 minus 1. If you don't get this, this function here, then you know you've made a mistake in your calculation. So, rearranging this, capital Y must be S squared over S to the power of 4 minus 1. To finish this problem, we need to find the inverse Laplace transform of this function. We need to factorize this and then use partial corrections. We can factorize the denominator into S squared minus 1, S squared plus 1, and then we can use partial corrections. And I leave this for you to check. This is a half over s squared minus 1 plus a half s squared plus 1. We have a half. So, and then when we take the inverse of this transform to find small y, we know this must be a half inverse of this transform 1 over s squared minus 1 plus a half inverse of this transform 1 over s squared plus 1. The inverse and class transform 1 over s squared minus 1 is shown t. And the inverse and class transform 1 over s squared plus 1 is sine t. So the answer to this problem is a half shown t plus a half sine t. And if you're interested, the graph of this function, the graph of the solution to this initial value problem, looks like this. And that is the end of today's lesson. Next week we will have a midterm exam, which will be a multiple choice test. And it will cover chapters 1 to 3 and the two sections that we talked about today. After I've written the exam, I will send an announcement with more information about it to you. Do you have any questions? You need some you, you need something to plot as y of zero and y prime of zero, etc. etc. Otherwise you would just end up with y of zero, um, y prime of zero in your solution, which would take the place of the confidence that you would get using another method. So yes, you can do it, but I won't be asking questions like that because you would get messy. The exam topics are here. Exam topics are on this slide. I haven't decided yet because I haven't written the questions. I haven't decided whether to do two hard questions or ten easy questions or some mixture, but it'll it'll be 
enough, you have enough time to solve them. Yes, it will be a multiple choice test, similar to the homework perhaps, although with, a little, with some differences. With the homework, you're allowed to have three, three goes at it, three attempts. With the exam, you will only have one attempt. Um, with the homework, you can see all of the questions at once. With, in the exam, you will only see one question at a time. 